In this presentation, I would like to talk about big data applications. So not the technology side, but first the applications we can use big data in and what does it mean to use big data. In this slide, you see a short overview of the topics we are covering here in this presentation. First, I will talk about the notion, the idea of big data. What does it mean? And then in the second part, I would like to introduce you to some applications of big data in detail. So this is first the traffic analysis. This is basically something which you have available in Google Maps, for example, when you overlay the traffic utilization on some streets. Then uh, human sensors. This is quite an interesting application. Not so common yet, but interesting because there are a lot of data uh, collected, acquired from different sensors, and we can uh, merge that together to realize the state in certain situations. Then we have predictive maintenance, quite common when you are in industries, because it's important for the machine maintenance, the, the failures of machines, and you do predictive maintenance to avoid these failures upfront. Then we have the smart grid application. This is something what uh, households, for example, uh, are dealing with. In mobile network analysis, there are also big amounts of data which the mobile operators use to improve their quality of the networks. And social media analysis. It's quite common today to analyze a lot of sources for social media data. For example, you analyze Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus maybe, to get a feeling what's out there in discussions regarding your product, for example, or regarding your product release, or uh, what people do with the product, what do they feel about the product. That's something what you can do with big data application for social media analysis. And there are other applications as well. For example, if you look into sports, you can analyze data in sports during a football game for example and there you equip the players with positioning sensors you equip the ball with uh, sensors and uh, all data merge together give you an idea about the situation of the fitness of the players for example and some statistics about uh, ball contacts and so on real-time analysis is one mode in which you can do big data analysis in sports and you of course can also analyze historians there are a lot of historians out there with game results with some statistics in sports matches and you can use these historians for a result for a game or a forecast to tell something about the state of the team you can do text analysis with big data for example, text analysis to translate to other languages and quite an interesting application is analyzing text to translate or to improve the translation of text from one language to the other. You have web data analysis, which is a kind of big data application. In web data analysis, you register each person who comes to your website and you register from where it comes from what interests does this person have and maybe how long this person serves on your website. And altogether, there's a lot of data to collect first, and then you of course can analyze these data also. And for example, Google Analytics is one tool doing this big data analysis for web pages in a quite comfortable tool. Then you have multimedia data analysis. For example, if you have videos out there, like videos at YouTube, and you want to analyze these videos regarding the hits, how many times they have been showed to customers, maybe also regarding the consumers who see these videos, what interests they have from where they come from, often they watch the video and so on, maybe to fade in proper ads, for example. And the last other application might be in healthcare, where you analyze a lot of data from your patients or from your insurance customers 
and with these data you can more precisely analyze the person you want to insure for example in an insurance company and then maybe have a better prediction about their future state of health and this maybe plays a role in setting the proper monthly rate for the insurance customer. When we talk about big data, what does it mean? Actually, big data is not a very new notion, not a very new idea. It's out there for a couple of years already. Maybe you could say in the beginning of the electronic data processing era, their big data applications came up. Mainly in the beginning of the 90s, it was possible to talk about real huge amounts of data, so to say big data, but the notion of big data came up a little bit later. First, we talked about the business intelligence, analyzing business data or data science. And if we look into big data and what it consists of, then we have different part, a big data application or a thing which might be a big data application could consist of. The, there's first the data acquisition. To acquire big data, you first have to acquire the data in certain ways. This can be done with different tools, with different methods. For example, you can use a distributed system where many sensors are deployed to somewhere in the real world, monitor a certain process, a certain behavior or a certain state of circumstances of the environment. So main thing there is to monitor with sensors the real world. Second point, uh, you could use not only distributed systems to attach to the real world, but you also could attach to the already digitized world, already digitized in distributed databases, for example. Databases which federate in a certain business application maybe already, and they federate on one common data pool. They federate for a certain purpose in the enterprise, for example, to support the enterprise goals. And in these databases, maybe also in different departments like the production department, human resources department, or the financial department, there are different databases with different content and maybe altogether huge amounts of data, which can be acquired in one centralized big data application to analyze and to lead to a certain goal to improve business effectiveness, to improve the, the broker effectiveness, the machine effectiveness and so on. And third point, you also could have centralized databases which already contain huge amounts of data. Um, centralized databases which are fed by certain sensors and which you then use to analyze and to make conclusions for certain results. Second, there's the data storage, which is important. Data storage you need in big data because you have either structured or unstructured data, both kind of data you need to hold persistently. You need to hold them persistently because you, of course, want to analyze and you don't want to lose the data when you worked with these data. So you want to use them later. Also, that's why you have to hold them persistently in a database, for example. So then you acquire the data, you hold the data in a certain data storage and then you can analyze the stored data. Analyzing for, for example, finding correlations in the data over time, over different data types, different data sets, different data rows, whatever. Methods for analyzing are an important part in big data applications. And when we talk about methods, then we also have to talk about the visualization, which is possible on these data. And the visualization is 
important because with the visualization, the humans, the data scientists, for example, they get an inside view into correlations of data, into behavior of data, so that they can get an idea maybe how to analyze these data further or getting results already about a certain behavior of the data. Also with the visualization, you are able to find special properties of the data. That means that you see data might somehow correlate and then you configure an analysis method, you apply to the data and that brings you further to another result. So this was first an overview of the idea of big data and of the parts big data consists of. And now we'd like to talk about some applications, some concrete applications of big data.